Somebody's phone's popping, by the way. <laughs> it does that with cell phones sometimes. I've noticed that. Remove your phone. Yep, it's still going. It's still going. Hold on. I want to see something real quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test something out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get you right back on, though, okay? Hold on. Wrong one. This one. <laughs> yes, it wasn't me. Yeah, see, no, it wasn't <laughs> yes. even Tim. It is it's Tim. It's a cell phone. This. Whenever some like battery sessions hear that, it's starting to pop again. Hey man, do you by chance have a computer? Um, not on us. We're at the studio right now. Okay, you too many, when he talks, he doesn't do it. It's when he does it. He doesn't. Okay, but here's a question: Do people say poltergeist like all like like accidentally instead of poltergeist? Like, do people think your name is poltergeist? Yeah, that happens all the time. Actually, it's a lot of people. <laughs> Named after the movie rather than two words put together. Yeah, man. How, and how did you guys come up with that name? Kind of a generic oh. question, but I'm just curious. Yeah, no. Nah, <laughs> yeah, you got it wrong for like fucking years now. Wait, um, five minutes ago. Yeah, literally like five minutes ago, we were joking around about this. Um, so it like originally was like two different things i had it i used to go ghost hunting with some homies like i'm talking about yeah, dude. and uh we made a joke saying that we would call ourselves the polter guys and uh then and that just was like a joke that stuck with me and then like a few years later when i was trying to think of a name for like uh, a music project which was the uh, how the band started was just uh-huh. like an project um i was like well, what if i spun that into something a little more serious and put like poltergeist in disguise together and then it just kind of happened and it happened to be a, an interesting words that nobody had taken so i just rolled with it and it stuck with us over the years does the rest of the band did they ever go ghost hunting with you no, no. <laughs> no. We, can, we, we do like a, oh we can do a music video yeah. that looks like a scooby-doo episode yeah. Dude, that'd be super cool like we're running in and out of the doors and I'm like, so you know how they do that in the Scooby Doo? Like, one person's running, and then all of a sudden, someone comes in another door. I want to do that actually for TikTok. I want to do that for TikTok. <laughs> I think a little TikTok video. All right. So, you guys been playing since when? When did you guys start? Um, As a group, like the four of us have been playing for a couple years now. In, okay. in this group. Um, the Pulitzer guys has been around since like 20 so as a project. Okay, so there's been some different members kind of in and out of the band. Yeah, it's changed a lot. I mean, it started out as an acoustic thing, and then it kind of has gone in and out of different brands of post-hardcore and the stuff we're actually at the studio to record now. It's going to lean a little bit more into metal territory, something a little bit more technical. Okay, yeah, and the guy, what's, what's your name up there with the, with the earrings, the big old gauge ears? What's your name? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Cameron. Cameron. Dude, that mask you have on in the music video, Fortune Teller, is that like a made mask? Because that's you with the mask on, right? Yeah, if I remember right, uh, the dude that actually um, that put like all the costumes together and came up with like, more of the concept of it, I'm uh-huh. pretty sure he told me he just found that at Goodwill and was like, eh, it's kind of cool. It is cool. No, it looked kind of like a like a like a Batman, like like a like a like a villain. And I guess you play a villain in the music video as well, right? Yes. Like you're the bad, you know. I and I thought I was like, why are you? Why are you the only one wearing a mask? I guess you're supposed to be like the super villain. Uh, I think and, so. what was the the idea was, was if like I remember, James Bond or something. It was like James Bond slash uh, Mr. Evil Kid, not Austin Powers. Austin Powers ish together. Wait, no. Okay. Uh, McGruber, that's what it was based off of, right? McGruber? Yeah, that's what it was based off. McGruber of. type shit. Yeah. He's supposed to be like. Dr. <laughs> He's like, I don't know, I just fucking want. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I remember <laughs> Doctor Evil because he was like in the credits. What do you want to be called? And I was like, Doctor Evil because I just got done watching all of the <laughs> all of those movies recently, and I was like, 
can I be that? And he was like, <laughs> okay, I don't care what you want. Just put, I'll type it in. And then he got your ass kicked by that girl. And the way they shot that video was super cool because it looks like she's like kicking everybody's ass too. Like the way they panned in and out of the, of the, of the, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess it was just the video, the way they did, the way they did that. Whose idea was it to do a, a fight scene? Uh, that, that was actually our videographer, uh, Anthony Tran. He pretty much, I, I sent him the song and he approached us with two different ideas. And it's kind of funny that we mentioned do shit because a Scooby-Doo chase type thing was one of the ideas. Okay. And then the other one was like a comedic James Bond type shit where we'd have some cool ass fighting and the car shots and then there'd be some funny stuff. That too and that was the one that that we went with because it, it felt like it fit the song and the, it just had a good flow to it so it, it was all his choreography yeah what's what's cool about it is normally when i watch a music video i can't really tell what's going on first like i'm not i, I don't know either i can't comprehend it or i'm not that smart one of the one of the two things happens but on your music video i can i can tell what was going on it's very movie like you kind of have a story from beginning to end uh, very cool. Have you guys been able to do a lot of shows? I know you guys are signed to a label, right? Aren't yeah. you guys signed to, to what's the name of the label? Storia Records. Yeah, uh, and how, 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 how what, and what do they do for you guys? How's that working out? Uh, so it's working out really well, actually. They reissued Vanta Black, uh, the EP that uh, Fortune Teller is off of, and we actually just released the reissue just a few days ago this past Friday. Um, the promotional aspect that they've done for us is the biggest part and it's been insane just the boost in fans and exposure that we've had through these guys has been mm. great and the label owners are at least one of them was like i had known uh well the most of us had known obviously signing with them anyway so it's cool to be working with homies essentially and then it's yeah. actually really good on the promotional aspect and they have a lot of connections for us as far as other people in the industry photographers or videographers have you so it's just easier to get things done we can focus more on writing and and practicing and just enjoying music for is rather than a lot of the management aspects of it and it, it just kind of makes it really nice really very, smooth. very relaxing yeah and are you guys getting ready to do any shows anytime soon are you guys already playing shows right now so we everything is for the most part booked up in our area um we've been trying to get back on some local stuff but the next thing that we have coming up um we actually haven't fully announced this yet it's going to be the opening for slaves um on september 12th cool, here. man yeah here in our hometown um uh, that they're coming through so fingers crossed that COVID doesn't fuck that up too but uh, i know man dude what yeah, i know you, i know you said everyone's booked but like what if you just showed up with your equipment anyways and we're like sorry we're playing like yeah you I, start said setting this shit up, dude. I said this earlier i was like what if we just pretend we're a different like, band we just show up yeah just fucking show up and start setting up like oh we thought i mean what's one more band be like look we'll just play like three songs we'll fucking get out of here dude you know what i'm saying like you think they'll tell you no if you already are like just be there first you like the first band show up an hour early and set all your shit up and then just start playing make them kick you off the stage that's what i would do man that's what i would do, I, do that now. Uh, I think i would do it but i probably i mean i say i would do it but would i actually do it if i was drunk definitely i would do it <laughs> I would you do it at a venue will never care to like play again yeah do it so dude oh my god this reminds me of a story i pissed this girl off one time i was in las vegas and this drop don't remember the name of her band was like 15 no fucking longer than that i was like 21. So like 17 years ago, 18 years ago. And she's on stage singing, and I'm like, you guys need a screamer, right? So I just get up on stage and just I just grab a microphone and start screaming. And like the rest of the band like wanted me in the band after that. And she like fucking hated me. She looked at me like you're a piece of shit. And what was even awkward, more awkward about it is I went to an after party where they wound up showing up and she the whole time was just talking mad shit about me. And I was like, the rest of your band likes me, so. Well, I should be in the band. I should, I should, I should be in the band. So, so you guys you guys just come up with an LP or EP or some P, something like yeah. that? Yeah, we came out with our first EP. Yeah, Vanta Black. Okay. But before this group got together, did Polter guys have like other songs out on other releases without this group? Yeah, yeah. So we did have uh, a slightly different lineup where we released two singles. Um, they're streaming everywhere. It's uh, Ectogasm and Ethereal. Um, and I mean, it's still in that 
post-hardcore vein. It was just a little bit different period. It was, it was many years ago that we recorded those. And then before that, there was an EP back when it was more centered around the acoustic stuff that we put out. But that was okay. so many years ago that that's, it's not even online anymore. So, Were you worried about changing the sound from acoustic? Because now it's more kind of, it's like kind of a, it's alternative, but you have stringing in it also, so it's kind of medley. Were you worried about people not really following because you're changing your style? Or you're still kind of in the early phases where it doesn't matter? Yeah, I mean, I think it was... Uh, I, I was never really worried about it personally, just because even when it was more centered on acoustic, it was um, on the more alternative side of things. And it was honestly kind of a weird brand of acoustic, like it was acoustic, but it still had kind of technical guitar playing over the top of it. Okay. Just basically, so it was kind of as if we just went from being acoustic to what it would have sounded like if it was full band. So yeah. like, the transition, although it was weird, once we actually jumped into it, it it was pretty natural. It wasn't anything too weird. And I don't think it was hard for anyone to follow that was interested in us at the time. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And are you guys going to stick with this style or are you going to get more, are you going to continue to get harder and harder? Because I know uh, you guys have a screamer and a singer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cam actually does most of the screaming. I do a little bit, but it's, it's like 90% him. Um, and then I do the rest of the singing. Yeah, man. And I think your voice kind of sounds like, and I could be wrong, there's a band called Taproot that I used to listen to a lot. I think you kind of got a little bit. I don't know if you know who that is, but I think you kind of got a little bit of his. But you don't know who Taproot is? I, I know the name. I, I'm not. I don't. How old are you, man? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's our oldest person in the band, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't expect some of the other younger guys to know who they are. Dude, those ears are fucking huge, man. Those ears are huge. Your your gauge. That's so cool, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to, yeah, I I used, just a I, little, a little big. A little big, yeah. Not, not. I mean, what, are the, what are those? Like a half inch? Oh, those are two inches. Oh yeah, I'm way off. <laughs> I'm, I'm way, I'm way off. All right, let's play your song, Fortune Teller. What's this song about? Before we play it, um, <clears throat> Fortune Teller is basically just kind of like looking into the proverbial mirror and kind of <laughs> seeing things you don't really like about your character, about yourself. And it's sort of just about the experience of coming to light of those sort of things, like facing yourself, realizing you're not who you thought you were and that you've got some changes to make. And by the end of the song, you kind of find that the, the character is centered around, which could be anyone, um, is realizing, OK, like I've got some work to do, but I can do it. I can do things to better my life and become a better person. So it, it's just about realizing you've got to make a change. And I will, I will say that the opening scene of this video, I thought it was going to want to be a funny song, you know, but like the opening scene, you're going to want to watch the rest of it, just watch the scene, because I thought it was fucking hilarious, man. <laughs> it, 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 it has nothing really to do with the rest of the video, kind of, but, it, but, it's, but it's, it's a good idea, and it, it's definitely something you're going to want to watch. All right, let's play Fortune Teller right now.
There you go. Uh, Did you guys have fun making that video or what? Yeah, that, oh, that yeah. was definitely one of the most fun. That was hell. It, we we all ended up a little beat up by the end of the day. <laughs> those car scenes. Literally, but... literally had a bruise on my back like this big from throwing myself into that dress. <laughs> you fucking threw well, yourself into it. I mean, they put that back. They put like a, I guess like a pillow sheet over your head, like and like, and then you had to walk into the car. I guess. Did you like literally? Almost trip when they did that. Was that hard to do? <laughs> oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> the first date, if I remember right, we're rushing because we're trying to figure out what to like. We're just doing it, stuff him in the car. And I think what was it? First take, he just slams the shit out of Dave, the back of David's head right on the, uh, on the car. <laughs> the oh, dude, I'm like, fuck this. The that, was like the, that was the first take. He did like how many more after that? We did like 10 more. And he, he got hit like two or three more times. <laughs> <laughs> did anyone accidentally get hit during the fighting scenes? Um, yeah, I you did. Because uh, I think McCartney got ki actually kicked. No, yeah, no, she, no, look, she was vicious, bro. Like, she literally kicked the chest multiple times, like, and I was like, well, I mean, whatever, like, we're going to sell this, we're going to make it look the best we can, like, I'm just, I'm full force throwing myself into this dresser, like, and <laughs> You want to make it look real, yeah. Yeah, like, every time I did it, I hit the same exact spot on my back every time, Ooh. like, like at, and it, I, dude, it took us, like, 15 takes on that one shot how long did how long did the whole video take to shoot uh, it was just a day yeah it was about a day the whole day probably like oh god it, it was a whole day most of it outside at like 22 25 degrees yeah like oh it was cold it was cold it was like middle oh. of february I think. When, but you guys released that when did you release it i, I saw it on facebook page it looked like you made a post in june about um the release so was it released later on after you had shot i guess goes to production and they got to edit and all that stuff yeah we shot it real early and then we were kind of just sitting on um everything like together and wrapped up before we released it so it's like a little bit um but also we've like gone through theoria to re-release stuff um because okay. it had come out last year but then when we signed with them this year we kind of collected everything back and then did the reissue back through them so it, it had been out already technically a year but it sort of re-released you know like this past year did you change did you change the music up at all or just the same same recording pretty much it, it's all the same stuff before. Okay. it's original production from uh cole clark and andrew bayless and then uh christopher crumman did the mastering so every, everything stayed the same okay i do want to let you guys know that uh Two days ago is my one year anniversary, so you're the first band I've had on the show since I've reached my one year mark. So congratulations! Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> you get that? Yeah, people are like, is it hard? Is it hard to start a podcast? I'm like, if you could just fucking talk to people, man, <laughs> so you can start a podcast. With you. That's all. That's all it is. So, uh, are there other any are there any other music videos that the band has released besides uh, Fortune Teller from? Or are you are you going to release any more uh, music videos from this uh, album that you're putting out? So not from Vanta Black. Um, okay. This is pretty much the Vanta Black cycle. Other than some shows that we'll play this year, is pretty much wrapped up. Um, we're in here to at the studio tonight to record a new single in the EP two, and there'll definitely be I would say probably at least two videos for the next EP. Okay, uh, cool. Uh, no, that was actually the first video we did. So it's um, that's the only one. And there won't be any more from this one. Although we do have a lyric video and a visual streamer out for two songs off the EP, but nothing, no like live music videos. Other how songs. much? How much does a video like that cost? How much? Did, what, what was your budget on that on that video? With four guys in a band, it's easy to come up with the money. I'm just kind of curious because people, some people in bands think it's really expensive to shoot a video, and I'm like. If you got four guys in the band, you all put your money together. It's like what a couple thousand or so. Well, it yeah, it depends. We we were. Yeah, so, uh, 
that's kind of a special homie rig for that. Which is gotcha. Um, but it is very expensive because when you're shooting a video like that, you um, kind of have to account for more than the videographer. You've got to, like, you know, property rental for a place like the house, rent it out, and uh, costuming. Um, we paid a, a makeup artist for a lot of stuff as well. So there's a lot of things that people don't think about, and it can add up and it can it can go well over a couple grand. Um, so it's not undoable by any means, but it right. is. You definitely got to plan for it. it. It's not something you can just jump into. Yeah, I like I, my favorite part of that song is the breakdown. I like the breakdown um, with the like the drums and sounds. Like, I, I forgot what you're saying in the background there, but that and then at the very end, but I gotta do the dee dee whatever you say. <laughs> Almost that reminds me of something. But I like it, man. It's a cool little. It's a cool. It's like I said. It's kind of like alternative, but you have like a hard uh, screamy feel to it, man. I, I, I dig it. Thank you. So. Yeah, it was um, when we were working on that with uh, Andrew. Uh, he had been writing that big build up, and I kind of just told him, "Hey, let's go out of left field and like let's do something fucking weird, man. Like let's throw something." Yeah. Fun. And I think it worked. It ended up being kind of like the trademark moment of the song. Um, yeah, I think it was a good decision rather than just doing a second breakdown. It's gonna get a lot of confusion live. I feel like for people that like first haven't heard it, like I feel like you just have this intense break, like build up coming into it, and you're just like, "Oh, it's about to be down and then like all the monsters out there. There's, there's, they're about to be like. <laughs> Do you guys know the lady in that in that in that video? Is that someone? Is that your girlfriend, or is that an actress? Or actress? None of us had ever met her before. David's girlfriend for a day. Team was easy. Yeah. Did, did you really get on top of her, like helping her, like you know? Or was she not even in the bed? You got. And did and did and did, and did you accidentally get a boner while you were doing it? Because oh, the dude's going to be fucking dying. <laughs> so, no, I was literally like on her stomach in the video. It doesn't look like it, but just the way it was positioned, I was like on her stomach and I was wearing jeans on. And you know, it was the most uncomfortable shit I've ever seen. Yeah, well, I, I bet it's uncomfortable because you're like, you're, you're sitting there humping a girl's stomach. You know, and she's laying in the bed, and, he, and you got it. You got to be like, maybe, maybe I just take my jeans off. Maybe she'll actually do it with me. Like you know, like no one's watching. Like no one's like, does that ever cross your mind at all? Honestly, no. Yeah, Unless, dude. Liar. Thought, like that was recorded in like one, two minutes, and my and she was it like. All you need, man, two minutes. She was not. Bad. <laughs> if you go for like, five, uh, this, this ain't the Olympics. <laughs> All right. You are so going to step out. In the scene is how it literally was in the book. It's very right. much like an awkward. Let's just like <laughs> let's just get through it. Let's just uh, did you have to film that more than once or is that like a one time take? Uh it, it was probably like three or four takes really quick. It it was one of those things where he would like walk back and forth and just get the shot real quick. It, it took maybe like five to ten minutes. Was the band there do like watching? Because I would have been cracking up, man. Like if he, I was there, was we, were, we wanted to go back there and watch this. And he just looked at the our videographer, uh, Anthony, was like, no, you guys can't but go back. You we, we, you already know that you would ruin the shot. <laughs> you <guys are> <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, if I remember right, David, didn't you not know that you were going to do this scene until we like showed up? We would have destroyed that. But if you know I that, like, it's a dog laughing, dude. Out of the room, just buttoning his shirt up and just looks at us, and he's like, that's the most awkwardest shit I've ever done in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it was, honestly, it was awkward watching it, dude. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's no, good. I do, yeah. I, 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 I think it's cool. I'm happy you guys get to play uh, your show with the Slaves Right Fingers Crossed on that. that and that's going to be, is that going to be in Kentucky? Yes, that will be in Lexington, Kentucky at Manchester Music Hall on September 12th. And everything's still kind of up in the air because of COVID, because of the uh, rapid uh, Delta virus kind of coming back in and getting sick as fuck again. And it's scary, man. Hopefully they don't cancel the show. Hopefully you guys get to play. And, you know, that's going to be a really exciting show. I bet a lot of people are going to go to it. It'll be good exposure for you guys. Yeah, it's going to be, be great. great. First show back, dude. <laughs> yeah, 
it'll be our first show back. Yeah, it's too, our first, so. I'm puking as soon as I. Yeah, we're throwing up right on stage. We'll walk out. And just, <laughs> dude, just give me a fucking cigarette the entire time. Maybe <laughs> I'll be like calm enough to play my fucking parts. <laughs> You guys, you guys, we're about to end the show, but I do like to ask, you guys move around on stage, you guys like rock the fuck out, and you just stand there and don't do anything. <laughs> just, nah, down. Uh, for the slave yeah. show, we're just going to be standing there doing nothing. <laughs> you know, I did want to say also one thing about the music videos, I like how you guys had the scene, but then you guys would go back to the band playing, and the mask was still on while you were on the drums. Uh, so you scream and, and drum, is that, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Pretend that, I can. Do what? I pretend I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey, you guys are signed. You guys have a great video. The song sounds fantastic, man. I wish nothing but the best of you guys moving forward. Hopefully, you guys get the tour and do some really big things. You're on the right. You're on the right track. That is for sure. Um, what's your website? Where can people find your merchandise? All that good stuff. Yeah. So, um, if my merchandise. Um, Peoria Records actually has a merch store that you can look up, um, and we are on there. We have a couple t-shirt designs on there um, that are pretty sweet. Uh, as far as our sites go, our name, since it's so unique, is pretty much our name everywhere. So check out Poltergeist on Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter. Um, we are on YouTube if you want to check out the music video, and as well as the videos that we have up for the other songs, the little lyric videos. Um, and then we're streaming everywhere. Spotify, Apple Music, all of that. So, favorite playlist. Cool, man. And if you, if you guys, if you guys are anyone that's watching is in the Kentucky area and sees this, it's going up on YouTube shortly before uh, September twelfth. Make sure to go online. Go to, I'm sure there's tickets are on your website, or I'm sure you can Google Slaves. I mean, they got their tickets everywhere. And that, uh, hopefully, like I said, fingers crossed that show goes. That show continues to happen. So that's all I got, but I want you guys to stay right there and don't go anywhere just yet. I want to thank everybody uh, that listens to, to my show and, well, our show. I got a, a, some team members. I got myself tonight, but I actually have some team members uh, that are either on with me or, or just in the background. So go to www.theloftspot.net. Check us out on YouTube, Apple, Spotify. We have things on YouTube that are not on Apple and Spotify and iHeartRadio. So YouTube always to get the most content. Go there. Check it out. That's all I got. Peace out. Rock on. Much love. Hey, I don't want the band to go in there. I want you to stay right there while I play my outro song once I find it. Here it is. Peace. I just realized everybody has a fucking hat on except for me. Get a hat. Hey. There you go. All right, bye. This is the loud spot oh, outro yeah, by nothing short of tragic. I look awful with that. Is this all talk with no action? No. Is this my thoughts with distraction? No. Is this what I bought that's in fashion? Or is this the loud spot with Sebastian? Yes. Does nothing short of tragic have his back again? Yes. Does everything that's good really have to end? Yes. A pin post has a pin show, so to get more episodes, make an order, this is over. Thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to click the like and share button. Don't forget to go to our YouTube and subscribe. If you want to listen to our audio and pick up some cool merch, go to www.theloudspot.net. Peace out. Rock on. Much love.